Hi everyone, my name is Vin and I'm a product manager on the Amazon Document DB team here at AWS. And today we're gonna to be talking about developing with Document DB. So let's get right into it. So for our agenda today, we're gonna to cover a short introduction of Document DB. We're gonna just take a look at who's using Document DB and how they're using it. As well as we're gonna go into three additional sections of building with Document DB. So the first of the three developing and building with document DB sections is how to get started. So in this section, I'm gonna show you how you can get started by creating an instance and then we're gonna to connect to it. We're gonna be connecting to it from um, multiple tools as well as using it within and out of a VPC as well. And we're gonna go into some of those details in a bit. Then in the second section, we're gonna look at various ways of connecting your applications to document DB. So in this section, I'm gonna show you how you can use popular programming languages with document DB, as well as I'm gonna show you how you can connect to document DB for your analytical and business intelligence workloads. And in the last of these three development sections, I'm gonna be covering a tool as well as a few tips on that's built into the product so that it can help you work with document DB more efficiently. So in this section, I'm gonna be demoing one of our newest tools performance insights, which can help you easily identify problematic queries on your cluster and also show you how you can easily scale your document DB cluster when you need to. Now, throughout the session, we're going to be spending most of our times in demos and I'll be so I'll be swapping back and forth between the slides uh, with just a few slides that I have aiding the demos. Now, because this is super jam packed and there's so many different topics I would love to cover, I have listed a list of the resources at the end of this presentation. So you can dive deeper and do everything that I'm showing you throughout this presentation. So don't feel bad if you miss something. I do have all the uh, resources at the end of this presentation. So do stay tuned for that. Now, before we get into building with Document DB, I'd like to share a little bit on what customers and developers are saying about Document DB and why they're using it. So one of our first customers of Document DB was actually Amazon.com. Now, they do develop with Document DB for many of their applications using that document model for the document databases. And they really love how they can use the product uh, as it really helps them manage, uh, the service really manages their database as well. So next time you shop on Amazon.com, know that it is actually also powered by Document DB as well. Now, it's great that we use it in-house but who else uses Document DB? Now we have so many different customers in addition to Amazon.com that actually um, that also use Document DB across many different industries. In fact, I couldn't even list all the customers on one slide, but just here are just a few of them. Now on our customers page here, check out this link below and you can see what all these customers are saying about Document DB and how they're actually using it to develop their applications. So with that, let's get into a high level architecture and go through some of the terminology that I'll be using throughout this presentation. So going through this high level architecture and reviewing some of the terms is gonna really help you follow along with the rest of the presentation. So starting with an instance. Now an instance of a document DB is a compute unit that uh, provides the processing power for the database. And that's what you interact with and you connect against to run your queries. And this instance interacts with the cluster volume, which is the storage layer. And every time you do a write, it actually replicates your data six ways across three different availability zones for high durability as well as high availability. Now, a collection of instances with its cluster volume is known as a cluster. So you have, in this case, I have a diagram with three instances. Now, when you do have more than one instance, one of these instances is gonna be the primary and all the other replica uh, instances are gonna be known as secondary replicas. The primary can do both reads and writes against storage, while the secondary replicas can do reads. So with that information, you know, we're ready to go into our first of our three sections of developing with Document DB. So the first of the three is to get started. So the first step of building with document DB is to ensure that you have a cluster up and running. And there are three ways to create a document DB cluster, much like other AWS resources. So let's go through those really quickly. 
So the first of the three is AWS Management Console. So this is the simplest way with the user interface as it guides you through all the options that we have available when you create a cluster. The second is CLI. So this is commonly used with scripts or if you're managing your AWS resources from a shell or terminal. And the last of the three is cloud formation templates. This is great if you're developing programmatically or if you're managing your software with infrastructure as code. So with that said, let's go right into our first demo. We're gonna be creating an instance and connect to it. So here I am in our console, our Amazon Document DB console. And here you can see a list of clusters and instances that we have already created. So if you've if you have existing clusters or instances, you will see them on this clusters page. So as you can see here, I have one existing cluster. To create a new cluster, what you're gonna do is click on this create button. Now from here, we're gonna have, it's, uh, this page is gonna walk you through all the necessary configurations that you need in order to create your cluster successfully. So the first configuration that we need to set is the cluster identifier, and this is gonna be the name of your cluster. I'm gonna call this um, demo cluster, not super creative, but it'll do the job. Cluster, and the second option here is the engine version. And what this engine version is gonna specify is the engine that I wanna be running uh, for my Amazon Document Deep cluster. And I'm gonna leave this as 4.0. Next is the instance class. And selecting an instance class is going to select the number of vCPUs as well as the amount of memory you want for your instances on your cluster. So you can see here there are other options available. I'm going to leave this as R6G large. And the next option is the number of instances. You could specify as little as one and as many as 16 instances. So you can the first one of the instances is going to be the primary and all of the remaining instances are going to be secondary replicas. The next section is authentication. So I'm just going to specify my username and I'm going to specify a password. And with that, I have all the necessary information to go ahead and create my cluster. But I also want to show you a few advanced settings that we can set as well that I might find interesting. Now, there are quite a few settings here, so I'm just gonna highlight the ones that I would that are applicable in our presentation today. Now, the first is network settings. Now, when you create a Amazon Document DB cluster, one thing to note is that that cluster is actually part of a virtual private cloud. And this is important because only other AWS resources that are in the same virtual private cloud have access by default to your Amazon Document DB cluster. So that's important detail number one. And the second thing I like to call out is backups. Now, backups are automatically built into the service with one day. However, you could specify up to 35 days of backups you can have for your cluster. And here I'm gonna specify seven days. So this is gonna enable me to say, point in time restore my instance back up to seven days. So let's say on the sixth day, I want to restore my instance, uh, my cluster, I can go back to the sixth day. The next is performance insights. And performance insight is one of our new features and which is a complete monitoring solution that you could add to your cluster with a single click of a button. So let's go ahead and do that. And in fact, later on in our last demo today, I'll be covering performance insights. Now, there are a few more additional parameters and configurations, but let's go ahead and create this cluster. Now, just like that, we've created our cluster. Now, this typically takes, uh, takes about five to seven minutes for all these replicas, replica instances to come up for this cluster. So while that's creating, let's take a look at an exist, navigate to an existing cluster that we've already created for the purposes of this demo. So I'm gonna click on DocDB cluster. So once you've created your cluster, you'll see, uh, and you can, you can access its details uh, by going into one of these uh, cluster detail pages. So you can see on this dashboard, it tells me a summary of what engine version I'm running, the cluster status, as well as how many instances 
are in our cluster. And I have some connectivity details here that, that provide me details on how to connect to my cluster, as well as some additional tabs. So here you can see the instances. You can see which instance is a primary, which instances are a replica. And under configuration, you, also, you can also see all your cluster configuration details. So anything that you've configured during the create step will show up here as a configuration detail. Now let's go ahead and connect to this cluster. So I'm gonna go show you how I'm gonna connect this cluster. So here I have a Cloud9 environment and this Cloud9 and, and cloud nine environment is actually a cloud develop it, development environment that you can spin up on AWS. So you don't need to set up anything locally on your machine. Now on here, I've already installed the Mongo shell, which is a command line tool that you can use to connect and interact with your document DB cluster. So going back to our, our cluster dashboard, you can see here that there's a section called connect this cluster with the Mongo shell. So I'm gonna copy this command and I'm gonna paste it into this terminal. So this command already has the cluster endpoint already specified. So you can see here docdb cluster and its remaining cluster endpoint details. And I'm gonna enter the username and password and I'm gonna connect. So you can see here, now that I've logged in, uh, connected to my document DB cluster, I can use it like I normally would. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the databases that's in this cluster. I'll put show databases. You can see here that I have a database called Pi customers and I have another one called samples. So let's go ahead and use samples. So I've switched I am I switched to the database samples as the default database, and I can take a look at the collections that's in this sample database. So you can see here, I have a movies collection. So let's go run a really simple query um, against this collection. So here I have a movies, so I have a really simple query, and this is gonna query all the movie documents with the um, sub document uh, filtered on Robert De Niro. So if I if my movie document has Robert De Niro as the actor for my movies, I'm just gonna I'm gonna be able to find it. So let's go ahead and run this query. So here it's going to find it's going to return all the movie documents where I have Robert De Niro as the actor. As you can see here, it has some information on the year of the movie the title of the movie, so in this case, Shark Tale, and some other movie information as well. Now, this is not really important for the purposes uh, of this demo, but just showing you that you could run and interact with your document DB cluster like you would a Mongo server. So let's go back to our presentation. So that was how you can create a document DB cluster and connect to it. Now, when I connected to this instance in my Cloud9 environment, I also like to mention that this was in the same virtual private cloud as my cluster. So while this is more secure, you might have other tools you wanna to use from your client machine or applications you wanna use from your client machine that's not inside the same virtual private cloud and you wanna to connect to this document DB cluster. And this is possible. So let's take a look at how you could do that. So in order to connect to your document, DB cluster from outside of your virtual private cloud. You could, what you'll need to do is create a EC2 instance that acts as a SSH tunnel. So you can see in this diagram here I have, uh, inside a region I have a virtual private cloud where my Amazon document DB cluster is located. Now in order to connect from outside of this region and outside this VPC, you're gonna need to SSH into this Amazon EC2 instance, which acts as a tunnel in order for you to get to your Amazon Document DB cluster. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, going back to my demo environment, I'm gonna show you what this looks like from a client perspective. So this time I'm gonna to connect to my Document DB cluster with a graphical user interface tool. So I'm gonna be using Studio 3T. So this is a tool that is 
a MongoDB management tool that has a graphical user interface. So in order to connect to my document DB cluster, I'm going to click on connect and I'm going to specify a new connection. Now I'm going to call this connection name demo connection one. So for server, I'm going to specify my cluster endpoint, and this is going to be the same cluster endpoint that I used before. So I'm going to specify this cluster endpoint that's in uh, that's available from the console. So I'm just going to grab that really quick. And under server, I'm going to paste it here. So you can see that the server is now um, I put it I put my cluster endpoint into the server box. And under authentication. I'm going to select SHA-1. And under username, I'm going to put the same username and password that I used before from the Mongo shell. And this time, I'm going to specify the admin database, which has the details of this user and it's going to connect to and it can authenticate with. Now I'm going to do, now I'm going to show you one additional step that's required in order for you to connect from outside of your VPC. So here I'm going to specify use SSH, SSH tunnel to connect. And the details of what I'm going to put here are the SSH address of my EC2 instance. So I already created this in advance. Once you've created this EC2 instance in the same VPC Azure Document DB cluster, you get into those details here. So I'm just going to enter those details and I have a private key. So these are just login credentials that I'm using for my SSH tunnel. And I'm gonna save this. And now that I have created this new connection, I'm gonna connect. So this is gonna use that SSH tunnel to connect to this, uh, this uh, document DB cluster. So you can see here, I have the same two databases, Pi customers and samples. So let's go, let's go here and um, connect and run a query against my samples database. Like I like I did before. So let me go here. And one thing I also like to note is that Studio 3T is a MongoDB management tool, and you could also and you could also use this against Document DB as well. And what's really good about tools like this is that it also provide in addition to just running queries against it, you could also use it for schema discovery. So you can see on the left here the databases and the collections. Now let's go ahead and run that same query I used before, which is going to query the, um, the movies collection. And I want to find all the movie documents that has Robert De Niro in it. So let's go ahead here and run it. So I'm running this query and you can see here, it returned the same set of documents that I have, um, the same set of documents that I did earlier with my Mongo shell. But this time I'm doing it from Studio 3T. So you can see here, I have the year of the movie, I have the title of the movie. And of course, all these are filtered with Robert De Niro being in the set of actors. All right. Let's go back to our presentation here. So that was how to create a cluster and connect to it from our tools. So I showed you how you can connect from a command line tool as well as a graphical user interface tool inside of VPC as well as outside of VPC. Now let's go into the next section of, of our uh, talk here. And we're gonna be talking about how you can build apps and develop against Document DB. So to connect programmatically with Document DB, you can actually use existing MongoDB application drivers. So document DB is compatible with this, with existing document DB application drivers. So you can develop with, you know, the most popular languages such as Python, Node, PHP, Go, Java, C Sharp, and much more. So let's go ahead and see this in action. So we're going, what we are going to do in this section is connect programmatically uh, with a sample Python app to document DB and to run that app. So let's swap back to our demo environment. So we are going to go back to our demo environment and we're going to go take a look at our console here. So notice here under this connect subsection of our cluster uh, cluster document DB console, there's a little link here that says connect programmatically. So let's go ahead and click this link. 
And here it's going to bring me to a page that shows me how I can connect programmatically to Amazon Document DB. So I'm going to go to the section on connecting with TLS disabled because my cluster does not have TLS enabled. So you can see here we have uh, code samples for the most for very popular languages such as Python, Node. So let's go ahead and click on Node. And you can see here each one of these has a sample that you can take a look at on how to connect your application to Document DB. So I'm going to just Python because I'm going to create a sample Python application. So I'm going to copy these contents. That creates a sample uh, Python application. And I'm going to go back to our Cloud9 environment. So here I want to just paste the contents of this sample application, this code snippet. And I want to make a few changes to connect to our document DB cluster. So notice in this connect section, I also have a connect to this cluster with an application. I'm going to copy these contents. And in this sample code snippet, I'm going to change this cluster, um, this cluster endpoint with what I just copied. So I just copied that. And now I have the correct cluster endpoint. And I'm going to just insert my password here. Of course, there are more secure ways so to, to put your login credentials in there, and that is possible. So I'm just going to save this file really quick. I'm going to call this demo app.py. This is a Python application. Let's save it. And here you can see that the contents have now been color coded for a Python app. So let's, go, let's just walk through this really quickly. So this is a very simple Python application. The first thing I'm going to do is import PyMongo. And this is the Python um, library that's going to enable us to connect to document DB. So in this second line here, I'd like to call out is the cluster endpoint that I specified with my username and password. The next two sections is specifying the database that we want to use as well as the collection we want to use. Now, we don't have a, a existing sample database um, database in our, uh, our cluster, but don't worry about that. When we enter a single document, it will also create this database as well. So the next thing we're going to do is insert a single document. Then we're going to query that exact same document and print the contents. So I should be... So after I've inserted um, a simple document with hello Amazon document DB, I should see that exact same document once I've queried it out. And the last thing I'm going to do here is close that connection once I'm done. So let's go ahead and open a new terminal and run this command, run this uh, Python app. So I'm going to put Python, I'm going to put demo app, I'm going to run it. So here you can see that I printed out this simple document. Hello, Amazon Document DB, and that was and that was it. So we can go back to our Mongo shell, and I could put show databases. And now, I, now you also see that in addition to Pi customers and samples database, I also see a sample database, and this was from um, our demo application sample database. So you can see that here, our application was able to. Insert a document in the sample database. All right, so that was how you can connect to Document DB programmatically. So do check out the documentation page that's linked from the console on figuring out how you can connect programmatically from the languages that you work with. Now, in addition to connecting to, to Document DB for your uh, for their programmatically with their applications, our customers have also asked us how they could connect to DocumentDB for their business intelligence and analytical workloads, which is another way to develop with DocumentDB. And for that, we have a JDBC driver, which can enable you to run SQL queries and run your business intelligence tools, such as Tableau, against DocumentDB. So let's take a look at how you can use Tableau with DocumentDB as an example. 
So on my left, I have a document from our movies collection that I've, I've constantly referred to during this section. And it has some information here, such as the year, the title, as well as some additional information in some sub documents. Now, when you use a JDBC connector to connect to an Amazon document DB cluster, it samples those documents in the collection so they can create some SQL tables, um, SQL tables uh, from it. So in order to run SQL queries, you do need some SQL tables. So here's an example on from the movies collection and some of the uh, what it samples and some of the SQL tables that it generates from uh, scanning our documents. So you can see here, most of our movie uh, documents has a similar structure. So you can see here it has a year and it has a title. So you can see that it creates a movies table. Now, similarly, we also see that there is a movie in under information subgenres. There's a sub document. So this turns into a movies information um, SQL table, similarly with movies info directors, as well as the actors. And last but not least, all the other remaining fields that are under the info sub document becomes its own SQL table as well. So let's see this in action and how you could use Tableau to connect against DocumentDB for your BI workloads. So again, swapping back to our demo environment, as promised, super demo heavy session here. So I'm opening Tableau here, and once you've installed your Amazon DocumentDB connector, you'll see that it's an option that you can now select. So here I have Amazon DocumentDB by AWS. And upon selecting this, I will have some information um, that I'm, for my connection dialog. So I'm gonna enter the same cluster endpoint. It's gonna have some database, it's gonna have a username and a password. So I'm just gonna enter our password. I'm gonna disable TLS because my instance does not have TLS enabled. And because Tableau is actually outside of our VPC, we also need to connect using an SSH tunnel. So I already have this information already pre-populated. So this is the exact same information that I used when I was connecting with Studio 3T. So with that, let's click on sign in. So upon connecting, remember, as I mentioned earlier, Tableau is not only connecting, but it is also scanning the, the collection for documents so that it can generate some SQL table and schemas. So you can see here, now that I've selected the sample schema, which is which relates to the samples database in my document DB cluster, I now see that I have several tables here, which is from my movies collection. Now it's generated as SQL tables. So here, oops. So here, what I'm gonna do is now specify a data set that I wanna work with to generate a dashboard in my BI tool. So I wanna click on new custom SQL. And what I'm gonna do is enter a SQL query that returns a data set that I wanna work with for my dashboard. So here, I wanna select the title of movies and the movie rating from a set of SQL tables. And again, I'm gonna filter on where the actors is Robert De Niro. So really, really similar query to what I had showing, uh, shown earlier, but instead now I'm running a SQL query against my document DB cluster. So I'm gonna click on okay. And this is gonna generate a data set. Now, once I have my data set, let's go ahead, let's go here and build a dashboard with that data. So I'm gonna move my titles under rows. And this is gonna give me a list of all the movies that Robert De Niro is in. And I want to take the rating and I'm gonna put under columns. So with that, Tableau has generated a graph for me. And what's interesting and what's really cool about Tableau is that you could interact with your data here using this tool. So let's go ahead and sort these movies by rating. So just like that, I was able to sort um, the movies by the rating uh, of this of this graph. So you can see that Robert De Niro's um, highest rated movie is The Godfather Part Two. 
And just a little fun example here, and you could do many other things uh, using tools, uh, your BI tools against DocumentDB. All right. So now I've shown you two ways you can develop with DocumentDB. You can connect programmatically with your favorite programming language, and you could also run business intelligence workloads against your DocumentDB cluster. Now let's get into the last part of our presentation. Now, oftentimes when developing an application against a database, you wonder if your database is, um, your cluster is sized properly for your application, or you wanna know what the impact of your application queries are on the cluster and database. So in this section, I'm gonna show you some built-in tools into Document DB service that can help you identify the database load with a tool called Performance Insights. So again, no slides in this section. Let's just go back into our demo environment. So we are just gonna go back to our console. And so there's a tool here that we've recently announced and it was the Performance Insights tool. Now, to enable Performance Insights on your instances, oh, so just as a, so just as a side note, just as a side note, we have um, our cluster that we created earlier has finished fully creating and has one primary instance and two replica instances. So let's say, so going back to performance insights, let's say you wanted to uh, enable performance insights on a cluster. How could you do that? So you would go to clicking on an existing instance. Under configuration, you can click on modify. And under the modification of your instance, one of the options that you can select is Performance Insights. And by clicking this, you can enable Performance Insights on your instance. Now we also did this on, we also did this when we created a cluster, which enabled Performance Insights on all the instances of that cluster. So let's go here and dive into the Performance Insights. And let's go take a look at, so here I can see a list of instances that my performance insights can see. I'm gonna select on one of the, click, select this DocDB cluster instance. Now we're not gonna be able to go into all the details here, but I do wanna provide you a very high level overview of this performance insights tool. Now the main goal of this tool is to help you identify when and where there was a load on your instance. So you can see here on the very top, top right, you could actually view data, performance data from up to a week. So we store this data for you. And I'm gonna select the last 24 hours. So you can see here, I'm, I can view all, the, I can view some performance data in the last 24 hours. Now this performance insights dashboard is roughly split into three main sections. First is the counter metrics. And the counter metrics is operating system metrics that you can view on your instance. For example, I can take a look at CPU data, I can also take a look at memory data as well. Going to the second section, which is in my opinion, the most important section, I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit, is the database load graph. And I would say that this is actually the most important section of this tool. So, and I'm gonna show you how you can use this to help identify load on your instance. So going here, you can see that there's a load graph and then there's different times time stamps here in the, over the last 24 hours. Now on this load graph, you can actually highlight the section that you're most interested in to zoom in. So I wanna zoom in to the, to the section where there's some load, I can zoom in again, and I can see that there's some load on this database during this time span. Now, what is load, right? So we have database load measured in this uh, metric called average active sessions. And a single average, uh, and a single, active session is actually a connection to your database and it's running a query. So if you have user run, running query one, then there's one, uh, one active session. And we actually, and it's actually called average active sessions because we sampled this and averaged those results out. So in short, if you have more average active sessions, it means there's more load on your instance. And if you have less, you have less load on your instance. And what, and what each average active session means is, what is your workload waiting on? Is it waiting on more CPU? Is it waiting on more IO from your instance? So if your instance, if your workload is 
waiting on a lot of CPU from your instances, then your cluster may be CPU bound. So you may need to add more, uh, more CPU by scaling up those instances or scaling the number of instances on your cluster. Now, another way you can take a look at this load data is, well, which, which, are the, which queries are causing a lot of load on my instance? So I can slice this by a query. And I can see there's one type of query here that's causing pretty much all the load. This one in blue, this really simple find query. Now, you could have multiple applications running a very similar query. For example, if your app is in containers or you're scaling up the number of front ends querying your back end, you might have multiple applications running the same query. So we can also slice this by application. And you can see here that I have two applications, even though they're both of them running very similar queries against my instance. So you can see here I have a hello app and a demo app. Now, going to the bottom here, the last of the last section of this performance insights tool, we can also view the top items here. So here I could view the top weights, weight events. I could also view the top databases, which has the most load running against it. So here I have Pi customers and applications, which shows hello app and demo app in this case, does running the most load. Now, what's interesting and really unique about this section is that you could actually uh, click on this radio button and it's going to apply a filter on the load graph above. So I selected hello app and now all the load that I'm seeing on this database load graph is filtered and scoped down to the application hello app. So what I could do now is take a look at query and here I am viewing all the queries that's coming from this hello, this hello app. Uh, yes scope down to this hello app. So here are all the queries that's coming from this application hello app and it's load impact on my cluster. Now noted here, I can also go back to weights. So notice here during this time span, I have my, it was, my workload was generally waiting on CPU cycles. So this may be an indicator that my cluster is CPU bound. So one thing you could do is scale up or, or scale out the number of instances. So let's go, back to our document DB clusters, clusters. And say I want to scale out, the, scale up the number of instances on my cluster. Now I can do that by selecting on this cluster, viewing the number of instances and adding additional instances here. So here I could add up to one primary and 15 replicas. So I can just keep on adding additional instances here, specifying different instance classes as well. And that's really simple. Just by just with a single click of a button, I can add additional instances to my cluster. Now, the, again, this is going to take five to seven minutes to get these instances added. But again, it's really simple. All right. So that wraps up our presentation. Now, if you aren't yet a document DB user, we do have a free tier offering that you can try out uh, the service for a month. So everything I've shown you today, you can try it out for free. So just scan this QR code and it'll bring you to a page with all the necessary details on how you can get started for free. And as I mentioned, since the very beginning of the session and throughout the presentation here today, Document DB is MongoDB compatible, so you can use your existing MongoDB drivers and tools. And if you're ready to, you know, free yourself of some of the heavy lifting of operating a database, visit our migration page. So here's a QR code to that for resources on how you can migrate your MongoDB databases to Amazon Document DB. And as promised, here's a set of uh, list of resources that you can um, use to try out everything to dive a little deeper on all the demos I've shown today. So connecting with JDBC and Tableau, connecting using Studio 3T, more details on performance insights and how you can use that tool really to your advantage to take a look at database load on your cluster, as well as how you can connect programmatically to your cluster. So with that said, that, that concludes our presentation and we're going to moving, be moving on to Q&A. Thank you.